Have you been passed over for a promotion at your job that you thought you were perfectly fit for? Trust me, I've been there. Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you the five steps that you need to do to make sure that you get that promotion. Things that I wish I would have known in my career that's gonna set you up for success. <laughs> set you up for success. Let's go. What's up, cyber heroes, and welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, I'm Boyd Clewis, an internationally recognized cybersecurity expert, and I help IT guys upgrade their jobs into a six-figure cybersecurity career. If you wanna join me on this journey, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell below so that you're notified whenever I drop new content guaranteed to help you take your career to the next level and earn six figures and beyond in cybersecurity. All right, guys, let's jump right in. How to get promoted. And number one, what we're gonna talk about is, before I even get to that, just let me be clear. I only teach what I know and what I've experienced because I know that it either works or it doesn't work. I never teach theory. And I think that's one of the biggest challenges and problems that the IT industry and training industry is facing. You have teachers that only teach and they've never been practitioners and therefore they're given practical information and people can never grow. So that's not me. Uh, that's all bad. So this is essentially continuing what I've been teaching over the past couple months or so about cybersecurity, being an auditor, how to take your career to the next level. I've given you the framework that you need to follow. I've showed you how to update your resume. I've showed you how to update your LinkedIn profile. I've even showed you what a day in the life looks like. So let's say that you're in that position now. I'm going to show you how to get promoted. All right. So the first thing first is story time. Once upon a time ago, in about 2017, I was a senior security architect at American Airlines. I worked in the cybersecurity department and specifically PCI compliance. The manager for my team was terminated from the company, right? And so everyone thought, hey, Boyd, you're the architect here, the most knowledgeable person around PCI. You manage all the risk. You do this and that. We're sure you're going to be the person that gets promoted. And I agreed. I thought I was too. So I went to my senior leadership and I asked for the position and he said, Hey Boyd, so if I promote you, who's going to do your work? And being young at that time, my early thirties, I was like, uh, I was pissed off to be honest. I was like, so what you're telling me is I can't be promoted because I'm too good at my job. But now that I'm a little wiser and 35 years old, there's a principle that I learned from this that I've been teaching my current students. This is what that principle is. If you're not replaceable, you're not promotable. What I'm talking about is that dirty little word, SOP, standard operating procedures. We're talking about documenting everything that you do so that you could pick up a document, a procedure doc, give it to somebody else and they can perform the task at least at the same level as you or maybe even better. I hadn't done that. So if I would have been promoted, we would have had to bring somebody in and my time would have been spent trying to train that person as well as learn my new job as manager, which would have been bad for the company versus me continuing to thrive in my position and then bringing in an external person to be manager, which is what they did. And I respect that decision now. So what I want to tell you is most people have the idea is that I can't be replaceable. I need to be the guy on the team. I need to be the man. Nobody can do what I do. If nobody can do what you can do, you're never going to be promoted. So change your mind, change your thinking so that you can actually grow your career. Being replaceable and having a leveraged skill set is actually a good thing, especially in the technology phase. So that is tip number one, SOPs. Document everything, make yourself replaceable. All right, guys, moving on to step two. So now that we started documenting our SOPs and we're making ourselves replaceable, we need to take it a step forward and we need to identify gaps. All right, that is rule number two. So there's two parts of this coin. The people at your company that always find issues and their response is to complain and talk about how there's no structure here. We need this, we need that. Number one, don't be that person. Stay away from that person. Negative mindset, they're never going anywhere. What you need to do is put on your consultant hat and your business technology professional hat. Whenever you see problems, challenges, especially consistent problems and challenges, those are opportunities for you to grow. 
So what you need to do is identify the gaps. So let's say that you are working as a cybersecurity auditor and during your monthly evaluations, you notice that the Windows Server Department, their patches are never installed on time. They're always behind, so they always fail that audit portion. There's an opportunity there, right? You can investigate to see exactly what the problem is, document up what you feel is a solution, and then present it to leadership. So when you see problems, don't complain, document, find a solution that benefits the company. You don't wanna hang around with people that have negative mindset and they just sit around and complain, they're not going anywhere. If you wanna be successful long-term and eventually make the transition into consulting, this is what you need to do because consultants get paid top dollar. I'm talking about seven figures and beyond because they find gaps and then they bring creative solutions in order to close those gaps. All right. So when I talk about a gap, I mean, this is where here's where we are. This is where we need to be. And in the middle is the gap. This is where your process, your plan is going to be implemented in order to move the company forward. And when you're moving the company forward, they see value in you and companies pay you based on your value. So if you're not getting paid a lot of money right now, I'm gonna be honest, is because the company doesn't value you. So, so far, what we've done is we started creating our SOPs to make ourselves replaceable. Then we start to identify gaps. Now we need to showcase our leadership. Step three. So after we've identified these gaps, we've put together our recommendation of what should be done to close these gaps. Let's volunteer to lead the project to actually make it happen even if that's outside of your division, even if it's outside of your department, throw your hat in the ring and volunteer to lead that. Cause let me let you in on the secret. Nobody turns down help, nobody. Especially when it's in the benefit of the person that you're helping, right? So find those gaps, put together a thoughtful response and approach to mitigating that gap, and then volunteer to lead it from start to finish. Tell your employer, hey, here's what I believe what we should do. Here's what the benefit is to the company if we accomplish it, and I'll do you one even better, I'll lead it. If you give me the people and the resources, I'll make sure that this project is completed on time so that we get the intended result. When you bring that type of value to the company, they're gonna see you as more than an IT guy. You're gonna evolve into a business technology professional and eventually a consultant. This is how I have been able to make millions of dollars in my cybersecurity career because I see problems and I bring solutions and I lead. You gotta lead by example, all right? So step three, showcase your leadership. All right, cyber heroes number one, it's time for a water break. Number two, it's a great time for you to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you're getting value. And I would imagine if you're here right now watching this particular segment, you are definitely getting value from it. All right, so let's get back to it now. All right, guys, so just a quick recap. Number one, we developed our SOPs. Number two, we found the gaps. Number three, we put together a creative solution to close those gaps and we're leading. We're showcasing our leadership. Number four right here is so powerful. If you didn't hear anything I said, get this one down. Number four, notate your wins. All right, immediately, immediately. First of all, your resume should not be tasks and things that you did. It should be a list of wins and accomplishments. And if you haven't won or accomplished anything, it's gonna be hard to get a job that pays you a lot of money. So what you need to do is after you have led a project, you've closed the gap or you've done something significant that adds value to the company, you need to document this in your win book. You should have a win book for every single company that you work at. Immediately after that win has been solidified, you need to put it in your book. We forget things. You don't want to wait until you're looking for a new job or you've been let go from your current job to try to update your resume because you're not going to be in the right mental space to try to think about, what the heck did I do? No. Don't do that. This should be a living, breathing document. Open OneNote, get um, Evernote, find some solution or iOS notes if you're an iPhone user like me. Make sure that you are documenting your wins. I made my career off of this. I could give you three, three critical wins that I had from every position that I had that either saved the company money, offset the risk of the company getting breached, helped us be successful in an audit, something that was business impactful. Notice the things that I'm saying impacted the business. It wasn't something that impacted me. And if you wanna know what those specific type of statements will look like, 
go back to my video where we talk about attracting um, jobs via LinkedIn because we go over the resume process there. So you need to notate your wins. You have to do this so your resume is up to date and you can speak to it also as you are going through an interview process. But the cool thing about this is you can start small. A win is a win. As long as you can look at what you did and tie it to the business and make sure that it makes sense from a value standpoint, then put it in your win book. And then you'll have so many that you'll pick the top three that had the biggest impact and you'll add those to your resume. And we'll talk about what else you can do with that in the next. All right, guys, so this is the fifth and final one. What you need to do is after you got your win book, you need to do something that's gonna take courage. What you need to do is ask for the promotion. First of all, a company is not gonna just automatically promote you if they don't know that you're interested in going to the next level. They're not, it doesn't happen that way. So you need to have a conversation with your leadership to explain what your career aspirations are. And when that opportunity comes, for a promotion, maybe a slot becomes available or you think that there's a slot that should be available, you take your win book and you set a meeting and you have a conversation with your manager. Tell them, hey, for the past year, these are the things that I've brought to the organization that have brought value. I've done this, X, Y, Z, boom, 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 that brought value to the company. And what I would like to do in the next phase of my career is, I would like to become a security analyst. I would like to become cybersecurity manager, whatever that role is, but you have the actual data to back up what you've done, how you've led. And you can talk about, hey, I led these projects to completion that had this impact. And I think that I can bring more value if I move to this next phase. What do you think? So you say your piece and then you put it on them, but it's gonna be difficult to have that conversation if you haven't documented what you do in your SLPs to make yourself replaceable, right? You haven't found the gaps, you haven't led from the front, and you haven't created that brag book, your win book. It is so important that you do all of these. You can't skip any of these if you wanna make it to the next level and get promoted. And because I love you, cyber heroes, I got a sixth and bonus one for you. This right here is next level, so check this out. Quick backstory, when I was working at a small software company, I was actually an IT specialist. I worked in virtual infrastructure, so I configured VM servers, Citrix servers, managed those things in a SOC, which is a um, security operations center, right? We had no IT security staff, but I became interested in cybersecurity. So I did some studying, I got the company to pay for a couple certifications for me, and then I started using the knowledge that I learned from the training to identify gaps and things that we had in our systems, in our processes, and in our network. And then I started raising those concerns to leadership and putting together plans to address them and offering to lead them, just like I'm telling you guys. And again, remember what I'm saying, the security department did not exist. There was no security analyst or anything. We had a security officer and he was the only security person at the company. But after doing what I'm telling you guys for six months and having some noticeable accomplishments like getting a vulnerability management scanner configured for the company to scan, identify, and remove vulnerabilities from critical systems, they promoted me to security analyst. But the cool thing is that position didn't exist. They literally looked at what I did and I told them I wanted to work in security. And they said, hey boy, we don't have a security department here, but we see what you're doing and we love your passion for it. So we're gonna create it. So they created the IT security analyst position for me and moved me out of the SOC, which I had to work overnight. And I got to work on the day shift which was great, it was beautiful. But because I followed this process, I was able to take that next phase in my career, which ultimately led me to becoming the senior security architect for the world's largest airline. So take what I'm saying to heart and implement these strategies because they work. It's not an overnight process, but this needs to be your new normal. All right, cyber heroes, well, that is it. We've made it to the end. I hope that you got some amazing value from this video about how to get promoted. So my question to you is, is, were you doing any of these steps? Did anything stand out to you? Let me know in the comments. Have you been passed over promotion? Do you feel like this strategy would have helped you? Let me know down in the comments. I love to hear from you. 
All right, guys, so if you found value in this video, be sure to like it and subscribe to the channel so that you're notified whenever I drop new content guaranteed to help you take your career to six figures and beyond. And if you wanna go a step further, if you'd like to personally work with me and my team where we train, mentor, and teach you the skills in order to become a cybersecurity specialist so that you can change your financial status for life, click the link down in the description or you can go over to www.boycluis.com forward slash GRC. Check out our case studies and then apply for a consultation with my enrollment team. And if you're a good fit, we will invite you to join the Baxter Clueless Cybersecurity Training Academy, where we've helped more than 500 people upgrade their jobs into six figure cybersecurity careers since 2017. So that's all guys for this one. And I'll see y'all on the next video. Peace.